Today, we are partnering up with Ribble to follow what has become the holiest of pilgrimages for all pros, to follow the traditional team reconnaissance of this most famous of races. You're gonna feel every cobblestone, every pothole, from here, right the way to the velodrome in Roubaix. At the same time, we're gonna give you riding tips and give you an experience as to what it's like to ride over such unforgiving roads, as well as the best equipment to tackle it with, and our personal insights into predictions for the race this year. The Arenberg Trench. La Truée d'Achenberg. You won't find one person who'd argue that there's any better place to anchor the start of the Roubaix Recon than here. Everything up until this point in the race has just been mere flirting, a warm-up to the grand finale. This gateway right here, it signals the beginning of the endgame. I see why they call it the hell of the north. <laughs> Man, like, my body is battered. That's only sector one. And, like, I I'm just, hanging, like. Just blow after blow, wasn't it? It was like being in a boxing ring with Tyson or something, like. 12 rounds, man. Like, barely get out alive with your life. Bloody hell. To put this into context. This is our first sector. And, like, our body's already battered. My hands. I can't even feel them anymore. Like my, my fingers went numb. I was squeezed onto my pass that much. Now this was 2.2K. It's the first of three five-star sectors we're gonna to do today. And yeah, like I've really felt that. I mean, Christ knows how the ride is gonna feel, you know. Yeah. With you know, well over hundred mile in the legs already. Yeah. I still remember that really famous Harry Bay with George and Cappy when he had to walk the last half of Arenberg. You see on the TV, you get onto the section, the water bottle is so dry, you know, the tyre is so flat, and quite often the ride is not flat as well. Oh, oh mate. Yeah. It's unbelievable, really. I mean, I think what makes Arenberg also so special in comparison to others, I mean, is the fact that the cobblestones, they're so big. There is no verge. Come race day, it'll all be ploughed, you know, they, they plough it there to stop people riding down it. And... I mean, even that downhill in the middle, I mean, like normally, a downhill on the road, I mean, you can freewheel, yeah. you can chill, you can have some food, <laughs> have a, a drink. <laughs> I mean, like, if you think you're eating down there, having a drink, you're having a laugh. What do you say if we go and have a, uh, have a Coke and get on? Yeah, I mean, just any chance to put you away again, mate. I think it's about time we put our money where our mouth is, what do you reckon? It's on. Here we go, it's on. See who wins in the velodrome in Roubaix. Watch this space. So after the savagery of Arenberg, Paru Bay offers up yet more opportunity at Helem and Wandini, both coming within 10 kilometers of the exit of the forest. Now for those still at the front of the race, it's a huge opportunity to do yet more damage to their rivals. For those at the back, however, it's a slap in the face, a huge insult to injury, and it could very much signal the end of their campaign. Now, at 3.7 kilometres, Wandini is the longest sector of this year's Paris Bay. And while the cobbles might not be as big as something you might see in the Arenberg, technically, it's very, very hard to ride with its corners and off canvas sections, giving it a four star rating. Now, on a tactical front, what you've got to remember with cobbles is the fact that it's not so much the attacking which wins the race, it's the wearing down process time after time, with the strongest and most efficient rider almost always triumphing. Now this section from Arenberg to here at 15 kilometers is the hardest section of the race so far. So expect to see fireworks. Oh man, my hands are absolutely wrecked. 
Now, honestly, man, 3.7K on that. I don't know how on earth they race over, what is it, almost 50K, over 50K? Yeah, so that plus another, what, 46 or so kilometers. Unbelievable, I mean, like, there's a total of, you know, almost 30 sectors in this race. It's like frightening. Mm. Hard, I mean, it's a hard man's race. Uh, as I said, only, only champions, only real champions will ever yeah. triumph in Paru Bay. Now, actually, believe it or not, 1896 when Paris Bay started, it was 280 kilometers, which ran from Port Mayo in Paris to two kilometers from the Belgian border. Now, and also, it wasn't even a monument then, it was a warm up to the more famous Bordeaux Paris. I mean, like, how mental is that? This, I mean, like, this is a warm up. This apparently was the warm up. Now, do you know what's coming next? Sectors. Tell We've me. got Brion, three star right. sector, and we've got Sars en Rosière, a four star sector. It's gonna be brutal, man. Hope I mean, we've still got, oh, still got over 15 sectors to go. Right here, we're coming up to Brion. Now this is a three star sector. I mean, it's nowhere near the hardest, apparently, but I mean, these are still looking pretty rough. And believe it or not, there's no gutter on the side. You have to ride the cobbles here. On other sectors, there's almost like a foot of dirt on the side, so it gives you a smooth line to ride on. Here, everybody has to suffer. If you notice, the weather right now has just started raining, just putting a sheet of water across the cobbles. Now, if you thought cobbles were slippy before in the dry, I mean, try riding them in the wet. You'd have more grip on an ice rink. Just batters you. I feel like I've been pulling ropes all day. Now it's raining. This is coming up to Sars in Ozier. It's a four star sector. It is brutal. I mean, it's just started hailing like there's no tomorrow. I mean, this is absolute savagery, this. So this is like a proper farm track. And I mean, those Paris Bay editions, when you saw the riders caked in mud, this is the sort of conditions they'd have been riding in. Fuck it up, I can feel my wheels moving underneath me here. Just keep the pedals turning, James. Bloody hell. Yeah, I'm just gonna pop round. This corner. There's, uh, there's been some fairly iconic editions of Paris Roubaix where you see the riders entering the velodrome looking more like they've done a cyclocross race than a road race. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's given some riders a very hard time. Johan Museo, for example, had a hard crash in the Arenberg in conditions similar to this. And it took him out of action and nearly ended his career. In conditions like this, it's so important to stay off the brakes. The worst thing you could do is pull the brake lever, lock that wheel up, and just go down. You see, in conditions like this, the cobbles offer little to no you know, surface to brake on. You just slide. You see, me personally, I love these conditions. Oh, mate, this is brutal. Absolutely brutal. You can take the boy out of cyclocross, but you can't take the cyclocross out of the boy. I mean, like the wind's cutting across us, the hail's lashing our face. I mean, honestly, this is the sort of conditions which legends are made of. Now, such brutal conditions combined with the ever disappearing gutter of the Pave is the very reason reconnaissance is so important. You need to know every millimetre of every cobblestone, either to avoid disaster or make your decisive attack. So we're now at the final feed zone of Paru Bay. I mean, we've just finished the sector Sars et Rosier, 
and I mean, it was hailing. I mean, we've had pretty much every season of weather today. We've had sun, we've had rain, and we've had hail. So we've really been put to our paces. And we thought it'd be a good opportunity to stop and have a coffee and get dry. Uh, so the key to any recon is you've got to wrap up as well. So kit off, jacket on, woolly hat on, stay warm. So while the guys are inside getting me a coffee, I want to talk to you about the bike that I'm riding. You might look at the skinny tires, but this is actually a gravel bike, believe it or not. This is Ribble's CGR SL. Now it's made out of the same carbon as their road bike, the Endurance SL, but with different frame geometry. So this has got a higher head tube and a longer wheelbase by 40 millimeters, meaning that it's more comfortable over rough sectors. Now this is a versatile bike. It can pretty much do just about anything, whether it's commuting to work, Sunday club run Paris-Roubaix, like we're doing today. Just about the only thing that it can't do is downhill mountain biking, but I think we'll let it off that one. I built it up in their bike builder so I could choose pretty much anything that I wanted to put on this bike. I mean, it can take up to 47 millimeter wide tires. I've chosen 28 millimeter Paris-Roubaix specific tires from Challenge and I'm running these very low. I'm running them at 60 PSI to cope with the rough cobblestones that we're going over today. Now, as far as the group set's concerned, I've gone for a disc brake specific group set. Now, I've not used disc brakes a lot in my career. Very, very responsive in braking. This bike, believe it or not, even though it's relaxed, is incredibly fast accelerating. Uh, so for me, uh, I can thank this bike for the slightly less sore ass that I've had today. Following swiftly after the feed comes the three star sectors of Beuvry, La Forêt and Orchie. But it's not until here at Bercy where the action really heats up again with the race well and truly at its crescendo. It's a four star sector just before Mont saint -Pavel, our second five star sector. Now, as you'll already have seen, this section is brutal, isn't it, Sean? Yeah, it's really open. I mean, you'd often find small groups of riders here, so close to the end of the race. I mean, this is uphill as well. I mean, constantly dragging. Look, I mean, this is not long after the feed zone. Guys are trying to get food out the bags, and they've got to go over cobbles like this. What's nice here, though, is there's a verge on both sides. So you can, if you want a smooth line, you can ride off the cobbles on the dirt. Helps save your legs a little bit more. And your hands. And your hands. We're gonna go up here for about 50 to 100 meters and swing another right, okay? That could be the next sector. Some local fans. I mean, the beautiful thing about Paris Bay is the fact that the course pretty much follows the same route year on year, doesn't it? So the people who live in these towns, I mean, they live for Paris Roubaix every single year. When we just had some uh, locals before, just screaming Paris Roubaix, Paris Roubaix, allez, allez, allez! I mean, it is honestly, this is what sums up France for me. The people are so passionate about this sport. I think this is what really gives the sport its heart, you know? This is a much better example of how to ride models. Oh, Jesus, honestly. Ah, oh, that wasn't easy. I mean, that was, that was a true five-star sector, that. I mean, you couldn't even call it parve. It was covered in so much mud. See the mud there, wow. Yeah, you would definitely have your heart in your mouth riding around that in a group of maybe 10 guys. All it takes is one of you to uh, bluff it and it's the end of your carry brigade. Yeah, we had everything. It had off-camber corners, it had normal corners, it had downhill, it had uphill. Oh, it, that's something that you don't really see a lot of in these sectors, do you? You know, the actual up and downs. You know, you might get a bit of a 
gradient bit of it, but this was really quite noticeable. It was just like, it was savage, the whole thing. I mean, yeah. this is like three kilometers long as well. So it's a real wearing down process. Not only will they have to worry about themselves, they're then going to have to worry about, you know, is someone else going to attack? Is someone going to crash? Punch? It's, you know, a distress. I can't imagine yeah. it. I can't imagine it. Yeah, it's luck, it's tactics, it's everything combined into one. And this is what Paru Bay is. It's a luck game. You just have to have no bad luck. One bit of bad luck at the wrong time, that's it. Yeah. Your race is done, finito. See you next year. You know, this is the moment to, to shine later on. This is this right now. It's about staying composed, looking after yourself, and yeah, making sure that you're at the front and you don't get forced into un, any uh, yeah, unavoidable potholes. Yeah. Speaking of potholes, uh, there was a rather big pothole on that, um, on that sector. Uh, we actually met <laughs> At Les, Les Amis de Paris-Roubaix, like we thought we were going to. Yeah. Um, and they'd practically dug up the whole road, didn't they? Yeah, I mean, there's a big group of them as well, and all volunteers, of course. Yeah, that's 30 people. I mean, like, yeah. these, I mean, they don't get paid for this, do they? I mean, no, this is no, just, it, like, purely it's volunteer. Passion. It's passion. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's why this race is so special, especially for the local people. It's, it holds so much significance, and they're proud of the race that comes through, you know, where they live. As it happens, I mean, it's not just this sector, it's the next sectors as well. I mean, the next few sectors, they're all working on. So unfortunately, I mean, we're not actually allowed to ride them. We've been strictly forbidden from riding them. We were lucky enough to just manage to skirt around the edge of this one. But we're gonna to have to join you just before the Carrefour de Lab, a few sectors before, where we're gonna be getting ready for the run-in to the finale. This, uh, this sector is named after Gilbert du Plus de Salle, the winner of the uh, 92 and 93 editions of the race. Oh, I'll tell you what, brutal sector to be named after, what a champion, like. Oh, there's, there's got to be an immense amount of pride associated to, uh, you know, imagine having your own cobble sector Oh named God, after I couldn't you. imagine, like, I'd be riding this sector every day of my life. This is sector six, isn't it, 1.1K. Borghiel, this sector, last opportunity to position yourself before the final two hard sectors of Confin en Pivel and the Cap for de Lab. and hot end of the five star sectors oh that weren't easy this was really really grippy that famous left hander really off camber the cobbles are everywhere there's loads of crashes but this really is the battleground of Pyru Bay like the biggest battles are won here and I mean we are going to go and meet now the president of Les Amis de Pyru Bay who lives local to here who's going to talk about his work and why Paru Bay is so special to him. What's so special about cycling is the fact that it's, it's full of people who have such passion for the sport. Yeah, we are volunteers. We are proud of, of, of that. No money for us. I have Paris Roubaix in my heart, in my head every time. Every day I think about uh, this uh, fabulous race. This is the final five star sector. I mean, my body is absolutely battered. I mean, you must ride these cobbles what, every week, do you? Yeah, I live in Roubaix and every Sunday morning I ride my bicycle on Cobbleton sector and I am very proud of it. If a rider is first here, he will win Paris Roubaix. Uh, it is the history of the race. So this sector is very important for Paris-Roubaix. It is the last difficult one because after it is a little bit easy to ride on. So it is very important for us, this sector. Sean has already beelined over there to the next sector. So I need to chase him down and I'll see you guys in the velodrome in Roubaix.
J'ai gagné. J'ai gagné. Oh. Saved it. Saved it to the last moment. Man I mean, of the match. Oh, I mean, this guy's been flying around the cobbles all day. It's been, honestly, it's been awful trying to sit on his wheel because he looks like he's barely trying. But sneaky track skills. Yeah. Dropped in on him, final 200 meters, and managed yeah. to get the victory just. Well, you know. Yeah, I, mean, I, don't, I don't quite get a, a cobblestone, but I'm sure I can find a rock somewhere around here. Yeah. As a we'll, have a, we'll have a look once we've got it wrapped up, I guess, yeah. What are our top tips going to be for the audience? Because most of them haven't done cobbled racing or riding before. I mean, you, you've, you've really got to look at it in two different ways. You've got to look at it mentally, prepare yourself, and then prepare the bike as best you can. I think the obvious one is tyre pressures. So obviously uh, on the road, most people will run 100 PSI, yeah. 110 PSI. I mean, I mean we, like, we were on 60. Yeah, it was 60 and, all day yeah. we've had. And tyre width is a big one as well. Yes. So the wider the tyre, the more contact you've got with the pave and uh, less chance of having a, a pinch flat. Yeah. Um, that's a big one. So tyre width and tyre mm. pressure. How you ride the bike, that's another thing. I mean, like... Just float. You just, you've got to try and let the bike do its own thing, but you know, can maintain that control, you know? You don't want to be planted in the saddle. You'll end up with a sore bum, of course, but then you'll also increase the chance of puncturing with all that weight on the rear wheel. Um, and it'll just make for a much more unpleasant ride. But Same with the bar as well, isn't it? You've got to kind yeah. of loosely hold, I mean, obviously it's all personal preference. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people like to loosely hold the bars so that you don't get that jarring yeah. through the cobble to the wheel to the bar through your arms. Last thing I would leave any viewers with, Expect it to be hard. If you're going to do this, you've, you've definitely signed up for something very special. It's going to, there's going to be points where you probably want to get off the bike and just have a definitely, lay down. Definitely. Um, I mean, these got, sectors are long, aren't they? Like, they're long, they're hard, you know, and it's one after the other. Um, but you, I mean, look at this. Like, th this is iconic, you know? You finish on this velodrome and it's all worth it. Yeah. I every mean, single kilometre, every single cobblestone, it's worth it. I'm absolutely filthy, mate. Covered in mud. My bike's covered in mud as well. I think we all need a shower, do you reckon? <laughs> you know what? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and there is only one place to have a shower in the Roubaix Velodrome, and that are those infamous showers. Yes, should we go? Let's go. So for me and Sean, we hope you enjoyed our Paris-Roubaix recon. If you did, give it a like, and if you haven't already, hit subscribe, and we'll see you soon.